Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, check this out. We've covered light guns on this channel multiple times. You got the Ultimark aim track, it's still hanging on. You got the PDP Mars, psh, gone, gone. It's not here anymore. And then you have this new player, this new player in town, new sheriff, if you will, Andy Sinden. Is he the main man in light guns? I don't know. But there are these two guys who just came along out of nowhere and they want to be the sheriff. They want to claim the light gun throne. And those two gentlemen's names are JB and Raymond Dye. Have they built the ultimate light gun for modern displays? I don't know. But in today's episode, we're going to find out. All right, here it is, the Gun 4 IR system. Now this one has been placed inside the Super Jolt gun, which was an older compatible gun with the PlayStation, which you could play games like Time Crisis. So what they did is they put the Gun for IR system inside this gun, and that's exactly what Raymond Die does for you. Because this is an open source project, you can source all the parts yourself, but the cool thing about what Raymond does is he puts it all together for you. So let's open up the system and see what we're gonna get in this box. Now keep in mind, the guns could be any types of guns. It doesn't have to be this one. It could be really anything your heart's desire. Raymond can make it happen. You know what? I feel like we should have proper intro music for this gun. All right, hit the unboxing music. Yeah, here we go. Let's take the cover off this guy. Bam. Okay, so inside we have the gun. Now this gun has a solenoid in it, so you do have force feedback. So you'll notice at the bottom of the gun, you've got two connections. You've got this phone looking connection, and that's for the provided pedal so you can play games like Time Crisis, but we'll get to that in a second. Then you've got this connection right here, which goes to your power supply, which powers the force feedback. And then of course you have a USB cord that goes to your actual PC. Let's get that out of the way. You've also got an included power, power supply here. This is for the gun's force feedback mechanism. And then you have the IR sensors themselves. Now this is what makes magic happen. There's four IR sensors on here that you're gonna put on your, on your monitor or TV. This is four-way IR triangulation. So this is why the gun is so damn accurate. And believe me, it is accurate. And then here is the pedal, which you can play games like Time Crisis. But you know what, enough talking, enough talking. Let's go fire this thing up. Let's go downstairs and see, is the gun for IR really as awesome as everyone makes it out to be? I think it is. Let's go. Okay, so the setup is super simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna launch the gun for IR GUI. Once that thing is launched up, you're gonna wanna do a couple things. You just wanna plug the gun in, hit detect guns. You should see your gun pop up right here. If you don't, just hit the drop down. You're gonna to wanna to set your screen aspect ratio to 16.9. Most of you are gonna have a widescreen display, so that's gonna be good for that. Set current aspect ratio to 177, and then set the con default content mode to full screen. Outside of that, the only other thing you might wanna check out before you calibrate the gun is look at force feedback, make sure enable recoil is enabled, then go back to screen and camera, hit start calibration, run through the calibration cycle, and after you're done with that, make sure you hit upload settings. If you don't, it won't upload your settings to the gun and you'll have to start all over again. And that's the basics of it. The cool thing is the software doesn't need to be running while you're playing. It's a one-time thing. You can just go back to it to make little tweaks and stuff like that. So let's get into gameplay. Okay, the first game we're gonna play is House of the Dead 3. So I'm gonna show you the gun real quick. The gun's got a setting right here for force feedback. It's gonna be off and on. So if I have it off and I shoot at the screen, you won't hear any force feedback. If I turn the switch in the other direction and I shoot at the screen, you'll see there's force feedback. If I shoot off the screen, it, the, the integrated chip inside will disable the force feedback. On screen, off screen. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it on and we're gonna start House of the Dead 3. You'll notice the tracking is really good. Very fast tracking of the gun. So it's really, really accurate. And the reason why is because you can see those four IR sensors on all four points on the screen. That really does make a difference. If you look back at something like 
the Ultimark aim track, it just has a single bar on top. So your accuracy you get out of this is much higher than something like that. The other thing that's cool is the software is all basically on the gun. So it's got the Arduino, I'm probably saying that wrong. It's got an Arduino board on here. So all of the software is all loaded to the gun itself. So you don't need to run software on your machine like you do with Sindin, which does take up system resources. So I do like the fact that all the technology is basically baked into the gun. Because honestly, if you have two Sindin light guns, you have two instances of the software running, which is just taking up additional resources on your machine which could cause problems depending on how powerful your machine is. Okay, we're gonna switch gears to a different game. Okay, so we're gonna play some Time Crisis next. So get your pedal out of the package, and then you're just gonna connect it down below on the bottom part of the gun. And then when you step on the pedal, it's gonna act as sort of that duck mechanism that it does in the arcade. Now, he actually sells real Time Crisis pedals as well that are wireless and all sorts of stuff. So Raymond can hook you up with all sorts of neat things, but this will actually do for what I want. So I'm gonna put it on the ground and we're gonna start the game. Time Crisis is available in MAME for those of you that don't know. Uh, and it's pretty cool that he includes the pedal because it kind of brings, you know, more of a realistic arcade feel to it. Okay, while we're checking out some additional gameplay, I want to talk to you about some more of the unique features that make this system stand out. First of all, the sight accuracy is really good. It's got this perfect line of sight thanks to that 4 LED system. It uses a bunch of 3D space calculation and advanced math that I don't really understand, but you can tell right away there's something different here and it works really well. You only have to calibrate the gun one time, unlike things like the Ultimark aim track. If you move with the Ultimark aim track, you have to recalibrate every time, which is super annoying. The latency on the system is super low because it uses a fast IR camera. So if you look, the average latency is about four milliseconds. So that's about the lowest that we've seen in any of these modern light gun deployments. There's no special software needed, no external processing. So you don't need to install things like the Sindin light gun software, which actually takes up precious system resources. And there's a bunch of additional advanced feature options with this thing. So the sky is kind of the limit and you can put it in anything you want. So although Raymond over at RPEG can put it in a gun for you, you can do this yourself if you want. There's a manual and I'll have a link in the description to that so if you want to tackle this project solo you can do that too all right next game is mad bullets man this game is pretty cool it's a new game it supports the mouse on steam so you can download this off steam plug and play with this there gun the gun for ir be working right out the box with this sucker super fun modern game have a lot of fun with something like this I highly recommend it. All right, let's go to final thoughts and we'll wrap this thing up. Yeehaw! Hey guys, it's final thoughts time. So how does the Gun for IR stack up against the Sindin and even the Ultimark aim track? Well, it has a lot of advantages. If you think about it, the Sindin right now, it's hard to get. There are a lot of people that can't even get one. So availability for the Sindin is kind of sparse right now. It's hard to find. The other thing about it is the Sindin takes up some screen real estate with the white border. A lot of people don't like that. There are some that don't mind it, but some are just kind of bothered by it. That white border has to be there because that's how the camera and the gun tracks where it is. It tracks basically the screen space by the white box, or you can change the color of the box, but you get what I mean. That box is actually how the camera tracks where it is on the screen. So that's something you can't get rid of. The other thing is the Sindin requires special software. It requires special software that even if you have more than one gun, you have to have two instances of the software loaded. That can be cumbersome. It can be a little bit more difficult to configure. And also it takes up system resources, which you may or may not have. Now the gun for IR, yes, there's a little bit more work involved here, unless you go to RPEG Electronics and have Raymond do it for you. You can buy all the parts that are inside this gun and put it in basically anything you want. But that's what, what's cool about Raymond's service is he does all that stuff for you. The system itself is pretty awesome. 
The tracking is really accurate. It's really fast. The latency is low. All things you want out of a gun, you know, a light gun system. So I'm really happy with it. The force feedback works really well. Uh, the gun itself, they're repurposing an older gun. So, you know, there is a solenoid in here. Now, will that last? You know, it's already an old gun. How long will that last? I'm not really sure. But it works really well. The tracking's really good. The gameplay is fun. It's pretty easy to set up and maim. And then if it's a Windows game that uses a mouse, it's just going to work. So if you look at like Mad Bullets, the last game I checked out, it just works. There's nothing you have to do. You just basically plug it in. So yeah, you might run the calibration tool really quick, but that's pretty much it. So, and that software doesn't have to be running all the time when you're using the gun. So that's a huge advantage. Now, Raymond's making these to order. So I don't know, he might get flooded after this, after this video. I'm not sure, but his, his information is going to be below. And people are doing and sending all sorts of crazy stuff. People are sending him real arcade guns. They're sending him Nerf guns. That he's basically putting this, this gun for IR system in anything he can. So I'm super stoked about it. Raymond's a really good dude. He prides himself on customer service. He's on it. If you need help, he's on it, man. Now... Let's make him really busy so then he has he has to keep making these things and maybe we'll take this into more of the mainstream. But right now, if you want a really solid light gun system, I think it's really cool. From a disadvantages perspective, it does have a lot of wires hanging out the bottom because I got to have a wire for the force feedback. I got to have a wire to hook up to the system. And then if I'm using the pedal, that's yet another wire. So there are quite a few wires hanging off of it. So maybe, you know, Raymond will work on ways to refine that over time, make it wireless even maybe, but... Anything that's wireless always induces latency, so it kind of defeats the perfect the purpose, but I love it. I really, really like it. All the links are going to be in the description below. I want to thank JB. Is it JB or JP? Damn it. I think it's JB. Crap. Is it JB? <sighs> yes, it's JB. It's JB. Okay. JB, the creator of the technology, got to thank him. Awesome work. You kicked ass. This thing rocks. Okay, so other people I want to thank real quick. I want to thank Kongs R Us for having me on a show the other day where we talked all about this technology. Uh, his buddy Brad was also on. Really good dude. He has a great video. I'll have a link in the description to that as well. So there's so many resources out there, so many people to help. I want to know what you guys think about this. Definitely let me know in the comments section. Is this something you're interested in? Is this cool to you? Or, you know, are you not interested? I can't imagine you wouldn't be interested because it's pretty freaking awesome. All right. Anyways, that's it, guys. Give us a thumbs up on the way out if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing to the channel. And that's it for now, guys. We will see you on the next one.